I don't quite understand how our American partners can criticize Russia's actions in Syria in the fight against international terrorism if they refuse to hold direct dialogue even in such an important area as political settlement. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on The Hardline. I'm Rick Blackwell in for Ed Berliner, who is on assignment. The fighting continues on the ground and in the skies over Syria. And today, Turkey reports it shot down an unidentified drone over Turkish airspace. Now, Turkey has complained in the past of Russian warplanes violating its airspace. To discuss the attacks, counterattacks, and also the role of Vladimir Putin, two experts, Richard Brennan, the senior political scientist at the RAND Corporation, and Dr. Emmanuel Ottolenghi, the senior fellow at the Foundation for the Defense of Democracy. Welcome to you both. Thanks for being on. Thanks for having me. Richard, U.S. intelligence now saying Russian involvement has not been a big help to Syria and the Assad government. Did Putin make a miscalculation whether he would change the dynamic in Syria? Well, I think changing the dynamic in Syria is just one of many things that Putin is trying to do with this. Uh, he has made a, a significant effort to try to, at, at one level, just shore up the Assad regime. But this has to be looked at in terms of the broader perspective of what Russia is doing globally as it's trying to reassert itself as a global power in the wake of its declining economy and in other aspects. They've done some remarkable things in terms of rebuilding their military in the last 10 years that have gone under the radar of the United States because of focus being on other areas and on other issues such as a war on terror. Well, Dr. Ottolenghi, I'm curious on this point as well. What is the end game for the Russians? Do they think they can keep Assad in power? Well, that's the minimum they, they, they wish to achieve. Uh, let's not forget that uh, Syria is not just uh, a, a former uh, client of the Soviet Union, which continued to be close to Moscow uh, after 1990. It is also the, the place where uh, Russia has a very significant naval base. Uh, it's, it's forward position in the Mediterranean. Uh, it is something that allows Russia to uh, project itself uh, as a regional, indeed a global power. So it is very important for Russia to maintain uh, a foothold there and to therefore prop up and, and protect and save uh, its ally and, and client from, uh, from the otherwise likely collapse of the regime. Also, I think Russia wants to make sure that uh, uh, it has a, a role in the saying uh, in whatever happens uh, in the aftermath of this uh, prolonged and, and dreadful civil war. Yesterday, White House Press Secretary Josh Earnest mentioned Russia's likely interest in building their own international coalition. So let's listen to what he had to say. I'm confident that Russia would relish the opportunity to add additional nations to their coalition, primarily because they're sort of out there operating on their own. They do have the, they are able to work uh, in some coordination with Iran, uh, who also is uh, characterized by their uh, significant international isolation. Well, Richard, who might Russia be able to add other than Iran? China? What effect would a Russian-led coalition have on the U.S.'s own coalition? Well, the, the, the first thing they remember is that the U.S. coalition is a very broad-based coalition that includes many NATO countries as well as many of the, the Sunni countries in the area. What Russia has today is Iran, uh, uh, the the uh, Syrian government and perhaps a tacit support of Iraq. But the, the bottom line is that, that, that this uh, ability to build an alliance beyond this is very, very limited. Whether or not China gets involved, uh, I think is doubtful because China has other interests at stake. But I, I think that, that what, what we're seeing is a, is a weak Russia that is, that is desperately trying to reassert itself on the global stage. And, and critics will say, well, we don't need to worry too much about Russia because they're weak and, and, and they're declining. But I think history shows that declining powers do sometimes very rash things. And what's taking place in Syria today, I think is one of those things that uh, will end up backfiring in, in, the, uh, in the face of Putin uh, and will cause them at one point to either have to put more forces on the ground to solidify what's taking place or to have to back down, which is gonna have some significant uh, backlash back in, in Russia. Dr. Otto Lenghi, uh, interesting article today on Newsmax.com from the former Pentagon head, Doc, uh, Robert Gates, talking about training Syrian rebels nuts, also said that U.S. involvement should be limited. 
What do you think America's involvement should be in the coming months? Well, you know, it's true that the Syria, the Syrian predicament, uh, you know, defies uh, any kind of easy solution. And uh, but, but you know, the fact that the, the situation is so complicated and uh, external interference and involvement uh, may come at a significant price or may not be as, as simple as as some people seem to suggest does not justify the fact that uh, Western powers with the U.S. Uh, at, their, at their leadership have chosen to be basically uh, bystanders, uh, bystander and not, not, uh, not intervene in any form of fashion uh, during the last four years. Uh, I think that uh, our decision to stay out of this fight uh, in any which possible way has only contributed to the larger vacuum that has been filled by other actors that are much less uh, constructive, much less concerned about human rights, much less concerned about civilian life, much less concerned about stability. The fact that the Russians were able to actually, you know, in, in such swift, uh, swift way to, to deploy and intervene, uh, I think speaks for itself. Uh, we have been speaking about the possibility of a no-fly zone, something that was implemented in 1991 to save the Kurds uh, from the wrath of Saddam Hussein in northern Iraq. It is thanks to that operation that uh, today we have a stable, prosperous, uh, autonomous region of northern uh, Iraq uh, under, under Kurdish uh, self-rule. It was something possible until the Russians intervened. Now that the Russians are deployed in Syria, I doubt that anyone in NATO wants to contemplate seriously such an operation because of the, of the risk of escalation involved. So I think that the fact that it is such a complicated situation and that therefore intervention should be limited does not absolve us of the responsibility uh, to look harder into this crisis and, and find ways where Western intervention and contribution can yield a result we can live with. And so far we haven't done that. Well, Richard, uh, an interesting take and an interesting interview this past weekend uh, with Steve Croft and also the president talking about Syria, and, and it was contentious at times. What, have, what has been the president's biggest missteps in Syria, and what are some ways that possibly the United States can turn around their Syrian policy? I think the biggest misstep, uh, misstep was back in 2011 uh, when the, the, uh, the, the opposition to the Assad regime took hold and the Obama administration refused to get involved one way or another. Uh, that set the stage for what eventually became the growth of ISIL and what, what, what has taken place in, in Iraq. So I think if you, you have to go back to the beginnings of what took place and the early decisions that have been made. And, you know, the, it, and the, the big problem is that we've un, been unwilling to really do anything to change the calculus on the ground. Iran is on the ground right now with well over a thousand people. The uh, Major General Qasem Soleimani, the head of the Quds Force, is, is leading an operation. You've got uh, the Hezbollah that's engaged in this. This really is a ma major effort to, to uh, make certain that the Assad regime stays in power. That's why Russia's there. Uh, and, and we're doing virtually nothing uh, to counter this. And I think that that's it's an issue that we've got to confront. There are lots of big problems with it as, uh, the, you know, at, at this point, trying to put up a no-fly zone and the, the point on NATO is exactly right. Our, our hands are being tied right now because of what our NATO allies would think. But we've got to figure out a way to be more assertive and to, to, to prevent this flow of, uh, of uh, refugees and, and the crisis that's taking place in Syria from getting worse. You know, Dr. Adelenghi, you actually mentioned the no-fly zone in your last answer. I know Hillary Clinton's talking about that. Many of the Republican candidates are talking about Syria will be a major topic at the next GOP debate, October 28th in Boulder, Colorado. If you were talking to these candidates, how can they show leadership on this issue? What do you want them to say as they're going around the country and they are running for president? I want them to talk about the eclipse of American power in the world. That is what is contributing to the Middle East uh, becoming even more fragile, volatile, and unstable than it was before. The lack of American leadership, the lack of, uh, of a de declared resolve by America to lead and to intervene in areas of trouble, uh, to help local uh, uh, friends of America, uh, you know, reestablish uh, a modicum of stability and order. That is, I think, the strongest message. Uh, it's not a matter of which policy 
can uh, can please the audiences now because nobody is going to do anything until January 20th, 2017, when a new president uh, sits in the White House. But what I think is needed now is a promise of a new vision for American leadership in the world of America as a leader of the free world. Well, I think one thing we can agree on, there will be a change in policy, as you mentioned, January 2017. No matter if it's a Democrat or Republican getting into the White House, changes will be made. Richard Brennan, Dr. Emanuel Adelenghi, thank you so much for appearing on Hardline, dissecting a difficult issue, Syria, as we continue to address all the issues right here on The Hardline on Newsmax TV.